the name of Allah, our Creator, the Creator of the universe and of everything that's in it. I greet you all, dear viewers, in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, blessings, and mercy be with you all. And I continue with our discussion on scientific notions in the glorious Quran, reiterating what I have mentioned several times, that the Quran is basically a book of guidance to man in areas that cannot be correctly addressed by man, such as the area of faith, the area of acts of worship, the area of the moral code, and the area of the code of transactions with others. These four basic areas are either in the domain of the unseen, and hence man cannot reach this area through his limited senses, through his limited intelligence, through his limited span of time and of space, and he needs the divine guidance in that area. The second basic foundation of religion is the acts of worship. And acts of worship have to be absolutely divinely decreed without the slightest human infiltration. I cannot tailor for myself a set of acts of worship and assume that these will be accepted by my Creator. This will be too much of an arrogance, actually. Acts of worship have to be absolutely divinely decreed to be accepted by the Creator. The two other basic foundations of religion, the moral code and the code of transactions with others, are actually controls over human behavior, and history tells us that man can never ever uh, establish a code for his morality or a code of his or her transactions with others that is fair and just because man is selfish and self-centered. Man is always afraid of the future. He tries to gain everything for himself and deprive others from their uh, due rights unless he knows his message on earth properly and unless he is watching his creator's instructions fully. So uh, these four basic areas are essentially needed for a balanced life on the surface of our planet. Besides this, man needs to acquire knowledge through observation, through experimentation, through conclusion, through imitating other creations around himself. And because of this, man has got two sources of knowledge. The first source of knowledge is the revealed knowledge that was taught to Adam and Eve, may Allah be pleased with them both, on the moment of their creation, was sent down to a large number of prophets and messengers in different parts of the world, and was finally integrated in the message of Muhammad, peace be upon him, and preserved in the glorious Quran and in the traditions of the seal of the long chain of prophets and messengers from God to man. The acquired knowledge is very badly needed to make man understand his or her role on the surface of that planet and uh, make him or her play that role successfully. At the same time, man is entrusted to this earth. Man is a vicegerent on earth. And he is asked by his creator, or if a female, asked by her creator, to play their role on the surface of that planet as good vicegerents on earth. And this role cannot be played successfully without knowledge. And that's what we call the acquired knowledge. So there are two streams for the human knowledge. The revealed knowledge in areas that cannot be correctly addressed by man, and the acquired knowledge in areas that are badly needed for helping man to play his or her role as good vicegerent on earth successfully. No one can live successfully on the surface of that planet with one stream of knowledge negating and neglecting the other. I cannot live on the surface of that planet successfully if I restrict myself to worship and do not do my job as a vicegerent on earth. And at the same time, I cannot play my role successfully if I indulge in scientific discoveries and technological advances and forget about worshiping my creator in the way 
he has prescribed. Both extremes are completely wrong and can never do good to any human being. So man has to have a balanced vision between the revealed knowledge and the acquired knowledge. I have to inherit my faith from the teachings of my parents, the teachings of my teachers, the teachings of my surroundings and my media. But once I reach the age of reason, I am asked by my creator to look critically in my belief. Am I on the right path or on the wrong path? Because it will not be enough excuse on the day of judgment to tell your creator that, oh Lord, I was created in a Christian family or a Jewish family or a Buddhist family or a Hindu family, and I had to follow suit. Because the greatest gift Allah has given man is or her intelligence. And in a way of acknowledging that gift from Allah, you have to use it to the best of its abilities. You have to use it to the highest of its capacities. So once a man or a woman reaches the age of reason, he or she has to look critically in their beliefs and ask each other's self, am I on the right path or on the wrong path? And once you establish that you are on the right path, you have to adhere strictly to the teachings and the guidance you have received. On the other hand, every one of us must have a profession. And you cannot have a profession without being trained in that profession. You have to be educated along these lines. You have to be trained along these lines. And the two sources of the human knowledge, the acquired and the revealed, integrate without the slightest contradiction. If there is contradiction, there must be something wrong somewhere. So, no man can live peacefully, successfully, on the surface of that planet without divine guidance. And at the same time, the divine guidance has to be absolutely divine without the slightest human infiltration. And if you believe in it, you have to judge for yourself critically that you are on the right belief, on the right path, on the right channel. At the same time, one has to work hard to be a constructive vice gerent on earth, to have a profession, to have a way by which you can earn your own living and do service to the community you are living within. Sadly enough, we know that uh, people have drifted away from the divine path since the days of the Renaissance, or even probably before that. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is quoted to have said that between Adam and Noah, may Allah be pleased with them both, there were 10 generations of humanity that lived on the true belief in the Creator, in the oneness of the Supreme Being, in the supremacy of the Creator who created us and created everything around us. Then the devil came and deviated people from that path in a very tricky way. He said, many pious people amidst you, he was addressing the people of Noah, have passed away and to remember them uh, if you can bring their clothes and put it on pieces of stick and let them sit down on chairs in front of their houses, people will remember them and react accordingly. And from this, idol worshipping came into being. And since that time, Allah has sent a long chain of prophets and messengers to bring people back to the right path, to worship the creator of this universe without parallels, partners or similars, and to be entrusted with that earth as good vicegerents on earth, working hard to make life on its surface as fruitful as possible, as peaceful as possible, as enjoyable as possible, as happy as possible. And the net result of this will be the reward or punishment on the Day of Judgment. So the history of humanity have went along these lines alternating between worshipping the creator alone or associating others with him uh, living according to the divine guidance or deviating away from it uh, living morally 
and uh, sensibly and alleviating oneself to the status of honor Allah has given the human race or lowering oneself far below the level of animals and eating and uh, sleeping and waking up and just involved in the material aspects of this world. So this is the story of man on earth. During the Renaissance period in Europe, a better struggle started between the church and the scientists. The church was trying to impose very primitive ideas about the process of creation with its three dimensions. The creation of the universe, the creation of life, and the creation of man. There is a very primitive idea in the Old Testament, in the very first chapter of the Old Testament, that speaks about creation of the universe in a very primitive language, creation of life in a very primitive language, creation of man in a very primitive language. And when Western scientists learned the experimental procedure from the Islamic civilization through their interaction with Muslims in Spain, in Palermo, in southern Italy, uh, in Arabian countries, particularly du during the Crusade War, they started to apply the methodology of the scientific procedure. And they suddenly reached different conclusions from what the church has been trying to impose. And hence the struggle started between the clergy and science. We will have a break here, short break, and we'll come back to you to continue with this discussion. So please uh, wait for us. Welcome back, dear viewers. Before this short break, we were discussing why the current human civilization has taken a purely materialistic stand and yet has destroyed the life on earth despite the great advances in the area of science and technology that it has achieved. This is, is what enhanced me to talk about the necessity of the Islamization of the acquired knowledge because man cannot live with the acquired knowledge alone. Islamizing acquired knowledge, it has to be according to a true religion, a true faith, a true acts of worship, a true moral code, and a true code for transactions between people. And as we have reiterated several times during this program, man cannot live peacefully, happily, successfully on the surface of that planet without religion. And at the same time, religion cannot be tailored by man because religion is established on the basis of principles that cannot be addressed by the human intellect. The four basic foundations of religion are faith, acts of worship, the moral code, and the code of transactions with others. The area of faith is completely, 100%, in the domain of the unseen. In the area of faith, we are asked to believe in our Creator, and we cannot see Him. We are asked to believe in His angels, and we cannot really have any physical means by which we can prove or disprove the existence of angels. We are asked to believe in the spirit blown in every human individual, and we cannot prove it or disprove it. We are asked to believe in a presence in the grave, either in paradise or in hell, and no dead man can come back to tell us his experience. We are asked to believe in the necessity of resurrection after death, in accountability, in judgment, in eternity, in life to come, either in paradise forever or in hell forever. All this information is 100% in the domain of the unseen. It has to be revealed by the Creator to His creation through His prophets and messengers. And this process was taught to Adam and Eve on the moment of their creation, was revealed to a large number of prophets and messengers from Allah, and was finally integrated in the glorious Quran and in the traditions of Muhammad, peace be upon him, being the seal of that long chain of prophets and messengers for the guidance of humanity 
towards the path of the Creator. So we have to really Islamize knowledge according to this last form of divine guidance to man. The Quran reads, فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ the instructions given to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is that the peak of no human knowledge that any man can ever gain is believing in a single sole creator of that universe. فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ You have to realize clearly and firmly that there is no deity other than Allah, the sole creator of this universe, without parallels, partners, or similars. This is the peak of the human knowledge. And if man lacks that knowledge, his role on the surface of that planet can never be correct. And uh, the fact that the Quran is the last form of divine guidance to man that has been kept intact in exactly the same language of revelation, the Arabic language, preserved by the rule of Allah, word to word and letter to letter, it is the assessment of the Quran to any acquired knowledge that can put that knowledge in the right dimensions. So, if any acquired knowledge denies a creation, it cannot be correct. If any acquired knowledge denies resurrection after death and accountability and judgment and eternity in life to come, it can never be correct. If any acquired knowledge claims the steady state condition of the universe with no end, it can never be correct. And that's why I dare say that one of the main reasons of the decadence of our time is that this pure materialization of the acquired knowledge, the complete migration away from the divine guidance. So with the Islamization of knowledge, we would like to assess every piece of acquired knowledge according to the Quranic guidance, according to the guidance of Muhammad, peace be upon him. And if there is conformity, then the acquired knowledge is correct. If there is disconformity, the acquired knowledge cannot be correct. This is the procedure which Muslims have taken in the early days of the Islamic Renaissance, of the Islamic civilization. They believed in the unity of the human knowledge in the nobility of the human uh, wealth of knowledge. So they took that knowledge from all the previous and uh, contemporary civilizations, from the Indian civilization, the Chinese civilization, the Persian civilization, the Greek civilization, the Roman civilization, the Egyptian civilization. But they assessed it according to the Islamic principles. Whatever agreed with the basic Islamic teachings, they took it and preserved it and cherished it. Whatever disagreed with the basic Islamic teachings, they rejected it. And that's why they could establish the only civilization in the history of humanity that was integral, that was complete, that was humane, that took this world and the world to come in one equation. The present civilization is purely materialistic has imprisoned itself and its individuals within the framework of matter and energy, space and time, and have neglected completely anything beyond the things that can be sensed, that can be felt, that can be experimented with. And this is one of the main calamities of our time. We have to reassess all the acquired knowledge from the theory of organic evolution to the law of preservation of matter and energy to the origin of man to the steady state theory about the universe we have to really assess all this strong information according to the divine guidance in the glorious Quran and in the traditions of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and whatever agrees with the divine guidance, we will accept it, we will cherish it, we will preserve it, we will enhance it. And whatever disagrees, we have to prove to others why we disagree with it. Take, for example, the theory of organic evolution that tried to negate creation and uh, to say that uh, organic evolution is a spontaneous process, 
sun rays reacted with the mud of the earth and uh, created the first protein molecule, which started to divide to produce the first living cell, which started to, to divide to give this millions of uh, species of uh, plant, animal, and human. And, uh, of course, this was culminated by the creation of man by this spontaneous process of organic evolution. Only very recently it was disproved. This organic evolution theory has been completely disproved. And people had to come back to accept creation. The law of conservation of matter and energy, although it's a correct law, but the phrasing of the law is absolutely wrong and very misleading. It has to be rectified according to the Islamic principles. If I say neither matter nor energy can uh, be finished to nothingness or can be created from nothingness, of course, this denies creation, denies resurrection, denies the world to come. But if I can say that within the limitations of human beings, matter and energy can never be created out of nothingness or annihilated to nothingness, this is correct. But within the limits of the Creator, actually the Creator has no limits. He can order things to be and it will be. If I uh, claim that man started ignobly without knowing his Creator, as many anthropologists of today claim, and he only started uh, building or gaining language by imitating animals and gaining knowledge of a Creator by being fearful of natural disasters, uh, this is completely wrong because the basic rule in Islam is that man started knowing and believing. So to round this up, I would like to emphasize the fact that we need to Islamize knowledge because Islam is the only form of divine guidance within the of man today that being kept intact in exactly the same language of revelation for more than 14 centuries. It is the only religion acceptable by Allah, all glory be to him. And of course, we cherish scientific endeavor and technological advances, but we would like to put all these scientific notions and technological advances in their proper framework, in the framework of Islam, and hence we call for the necessity of Islamizing knowledge. I'll stop here thanking you and greeting you in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, blessings, and mercy be with you all.